Okay, here is the second part of video three about probability. Um, I kind of got stuck on this problem. Um, it made sense to me before, but then when I was doing it, I kind of got stuck. But um, it's all figured out now. Um, our first node will be whether or not we draw a red king or not. So this would be um, a red king. Okay. By the way, that probability would be two out of um, 26. There are 26 red cards, and two of them are kings. Okay. Um, this down here would be drawing a red card that's not a king. Okay. Probably that happening would be 24 out of 26, since there's the other 24 cards are not kings. Okay, but it's still a red card. Now, um, our next card being a king will depend on whether or not we've drawn a king previously. So, um, from here, um, if I drew a king the first time, then there will be three kings left out of my deck of 50, 51 cards. Right, I drew one already. Okay, um, and the remaining 48 cards are not kings. Okay, now assuming that I um, drew a red card that wasn't a king, I have four kings left out of 51 cards, and there are 47 out of 51 that are not kings. Okay, now the only nodes that I, the only branches that I care about are when I drew a red card and, a, and then a king, well sorry, where both cards were kings, or where the first one was not a king and the second one was a king. Okay, because it fits this situation. So I will multiply um, 2 over 226 times 3 over 51, and I get 0 0.0045. Or where it's a red card that's not a king, times the second card being a king, which is 0 0.0684. Okay, now I'm looking at this or this happening, and or situations I add. So I add these together and get 0 0.0729. Whew. Okay. Um, second one is very similar to it. Uh, drawing a spade and then an ace. Um, so the first card being a spade, whether it being an ace or not, will change uh, the probability. Um, so in fact, you know what? I'm actually going to switch this around just so it's a little different. Um, the, it's very much like the first one. So let's change this to it being um, an ace. Then a spade. Okay, so drawing an ace the first time um, affects whether or not it was a spade or not. So it being um, a, an ace, that's a spade or ace that's not a spade. Okay, now drawing an ace of spades, there's a one out of 52 chance. Drawing an ace that's not a spade, there are three of those out of 52. Now, my next card being a spade affects my previous um, selection, whether it was a spade or not. Okay, if it was an ace and a spade, then I only have 12 um, out of 51 cards that are spades, because I, I drew one that was a spade. And the other, let's see here, 51 minus 12 is 39. The other 39 out of 51 um, is not drawing a spade. Okay, If you drew an ace that wasn't a spade, then all 13 spades are still in the deck. And the other 51 minus 13, 38 of them, are not spades. Now, I only care about this happening because that's where I get um, an ace and then a spade. So I will take 1 over 52 times 12 over 51. And I get 0 0.0045, <laughs> the same percentage. And <clears throat> 3 out of 50. 2 times 13 out of 51. It might be the same percentage again. Oh, it's different. Okay, 0 0.0147. Okay, and then I add those two together. 
because it's an or situation, and I get 0 0.09, I'm sorry, 0 0.0192 as the probability of getting an ace and then a spade. Okay. Um, last question on tree diagrams um, that we're doing together. Leah is flying from Boston to Denver with a connection in Chicago. The probability her first flight leaves on time is 15% or 0.15. If the flight is on time, the probability that her luggage will make it the connecting flight in Chicago is 0.95. But if the first flight is delayed, the probability that the luggage will make it is only 0.65. What is the probability that her luggage arrives in Denver with her? Now, this these questions are like the ones we'll see um, in statistics, not like the ones dealing with cards. <clears throat> but um, notice how the probability that her um, luggage makes it is dependent upon whether she, her first flight leaves on time or not. So the first node will be the first flight leaving on time or not. So um, on time will be 0.15. And delayed will be the other 0.85. Okay, then from there, her luggage um, arriving on time, given that her first flight was on time, um, is 0.95. Okay, the fact that um, it missing it is 0 0.05, we won't use that. Um, if the first is delayed, um, which is more likely, the low luggage making it would be 0.65, and her missing it would be 0.35, although we won't use that. <clears throat> okay, so on time times um, the luggage making it would be 0.15 times 0.95, and we get 0.1425. And then it being delayed, but her luggage still makes it, would be 0.85 times 0.65, and we get 0.5525, okay? We're looking at an or situation where this or that happens. I add them together, and I get uh, 0.695. So about 70% of the time, the luggage will be there uh, when she arrives in Denver. Okay, um, if you would... Please take a second, um, look over the ideas in this video or in, um, in this last lesson on probability, um, kind of jot down some summary notes, um, and try the, the practice problems that go along with this video.